Okay, infinite solutions. Where did we start? Um, grade nine, one, two, fine theta. And we said, hey, we know uh, that's opposite and that's hypotenuse. And we went, so sine theta equals a half. And we used our calculator to do the whole arc sine a half and got theta equals 30. And we we ticked that and we thought that was pretty good. We even did a worded question. Hey, look, I've got a two metre ramp to get up a one metre uh, uh, rise and it's a two metre ramp. What's the angle of inclination that I'm going to have to wheel my wheelbarrow up? I've got a wheelbarrow there and here I am pushing it up the incline to whatever and we got um we used a calculator uh grade 10 we worked out that um uh we don't have a calculator anymore so we've got to draw a a triangle with a one and a two on it uh well there's a one and there's a two and we're going to go well that is the uh 30 60 90 triangle, therefore x equals 30 without uh, the calculator. Also, in grade 10, uh, well, I guess we also know that sine 30 is a half. Um, for some strange reason, sine 150 is also a half. So one of you is now going, oh my gosh, uh, when I'm solving for x, X isn't just 30, is it? X could also be 150. How about our coterminal angles? Um, what do you reckon sine 390 is? It's also a half. What's another coterminal? Oh my gosh, how many values can I put in? Well, there's actually an infinite number of values that we can put in there, and they're all gonna get us a half. And therein lies a bit of a problem. We need to get our head around how to find all of those values. So let's uh, do one. Okay, so we're gonna start with sine x, I need to draw a triangle with an opposite of one and a hypotenuse of two. One, two, well that's my root three, 30, 60, 90. Because sine is O over H, this is my opposite, there's my hypotenuse, so there's my angle. Right, that gives us our first answer from back in grade nine. 30 degrees, that's what our calculator gives us. But we're smart enough to go, hey, we've got this thing called a unit circle. Uh, this 30 degrees here is my reference angle. It's just one possible answer. And reference angles get drawn off the x-axis. And here I've got to draw 30 degrees off the x-axis. Well, that's a positive, a half, so where's sign positive? Sine is positive in Q1, quarter one, and quadrant two. So I've got to draw this reference angle of 30 in quadrant one and quadrant two. And there are, that's my symmetry of trigonometry. Now this X, this X here, is measured from the positive x-axis in an anti-clockwise direction. So our first answer is definitely x equals 30. Our second answer is to the next terminal ray, hey, there's our 150. But guess what? We can keep going. We can go all the way around, get back here again, and then go up there. What number's that? That would be... 390. Where's our next one? What colour do we want? Green. So I want to, this is going to get messy. I want to go all the way around 
and then all the way over to that one. So that is going to be, let me use my calculator so I get it right, 510. 510. Because it's 360 plus another 150 degrees. And I can just keep going. So usually what's going to happen is in the question there's going to be a domain restriction and that says that x is between 0 and 360, which means you've only got two answers to do. But clearly you've got to look for your domain restriction and give the right numbers. But technically there's an infinite number of solutions. Since we're on a roll, let's do another one. I've got to find that cos is A on H. I've got to draw a triangle with a root 3 in it and a 2. Root 3, 2. Well, that would be 1. There's my 30. There's my 60. Now, A is root 3. So this is my A. So what's my reference angle here? My reference angle is 30. I draw my reference angle in the quadrants where, gosh, that's messy, isn't it? There we go. Did we notice here that there's a negative? So we need to draw the reference angle in the quadrants where cos is negative. Cos is negative over here in quadrant 2 and quadrant 3 because... Uh, if we cared to write it, we would go cos is the x component. So it's negative in quadrant 2 and 3. So I've got to draw my reference angle, which is 30, off my x-axis in quadrant 2. There's my 30. And in quadrant 3, there's my 30. They are not my answers because my x is measured from the positive x-axis in an anti-clockwise direction. So what's that value? And what's that value? And let's just stop. Clearly, we could go around again. We could, we could go around 360 and then back over there. So that would be... 360 plus 150, there's my 510, sorry, the next one would be 570, etc, etc, but let's just go the domain is between 0 and 2 pi. Oh my gosh, have we got to think about pi's as well? Yes, you do. So, uh, this first terminal ray here, that would be uh, 5 pi on 6. This next one, so there's my 5 pi on 6, that would be 7 pi on 6. And then all the way around is another 2 pi from that. And because we're talking about sixths, 2 pi is actually... Uh, 6 2 is 12 pi on 2. Uh, 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 oh, sorry, <laughs> on 6. There's my 2 pi. So that would be 17 pi on 6 and 19 pi on 6. Uh, you got to do that a fair bit to get that in your head. Um, they are infinite solutions. Infinite solutions, but we're going to govern them with a... That's called a um, domain restriction. Do heaps of practice. There's more videos on these as well.